Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney. Today is Tuesday, March 9th. Thank you for choosing to be here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. I want to take a moment to acknowledge that today, Tuesday, March 9th, is the one-year anniversary of us first learning of the first recorded COVID-19 case in the state of Ohio. Now, since that time, Ohio has lost over 17,500 people to COVID-19. I just want to take a moment to say thank you to the healthcare workers and everyone working to keep us safe and save lives. And they've been doing this for a solid year now. So thank you. We appreciate you. Now today in international news, the royal family has made its first statement since Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's interview with Oprah Winfrey, and this is what the statement says in its entirety. The whole family is saddened to learn the full extent of how challenging the last few beers few years, excuse me, have been for Harry and Meghan. The issues raised, particularly that of race, are concerning. While some recollections may vary, they are taken very seriously and will be addressed by the family privately. Harry, Meghan, and Archie will always be much-loved members, much-loved family members. And this came from the Royal Communications team from Buckingham Palace. Now, that comment that they're making related to race, if you have not watched the interview with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, relates to a comment that was told to Prince Harry. Now, they didn't say who said it or the exact context, but there were concerns raised over the skin tone of their child when Meghan was pregnant with Archie at that time. Meghan is biracial, and someone in the family made some kind of comment about the potential skin tone. There were lots of revelations in that interview. We have breakdowns of it on WKYC.com if you want to check it out if you have not seen the interview. In Minnesota, jury selection has begun in the Derek Chauvin trial over the killing of George Floyd. That happened over the summer. We all saw video of Derek Chauvin kneeling on George Floyd's neck for around eight minutes, him losing his life, and now his trial is, at least the procedural part of it, is underway. Now, they had expected jury selection to begin yesterday, but there was a one-day delay because the prosecution had asked the Minnesota Court of Appeals to put a pause on the proceedings until there are some appeals that have been resolved because there's an issue over whether or not the third-degree murder charge will be added back into the mix. Now, the defense has asked the state Supreme Court to review the issue of the third-degree murder charge, but wants the trial to keep going, and the judge says, unless the Court of Appeals tells him otherwise, they are going to keep moving. So that's what's been happening today. So, so far we know that at least one juror has been seated, and we will continue to follow what's going on with those appeals and what happens with that third-degree murder charge. As of right now, Chauvin is charged with second-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter related to the death of George Floyd. In other national news, do we have an update on the third stimulus check. The House of Representatives plans to vote on the COVID-19 relief package, the American Rescue Plan put forth by President Joe Biden, on Wednesday. They are expected to convene at 9 a.m. Eastern. Now, the Senate passed its version. The House already passed a version. Then it went to the Senate. The Senate made some changes. Here are the key changes that passed in the Senate. Instead of $400 weekly emergency unemployment checks, that federal boost to unemployment, the Senate bumped it down to $300. And it also removed the push for a federal minimum wage of $15 an hour. Now, in both versions of the bill, there will be $1,400 stimulus checks for people who make up to $75,000 a year. That's as an individual, up to $150,000 a year. As a couple, you'll get $2,800. And there will be $1,400 in stimulus money for each dependent in the household. But... Under the Senate bill, they did lower the ceiling, so that will gradually be reduced. And for people earning more than $80,000 and for couples earning more than $160,000, you will not get a stimulus check under this package. That vote is expected tomorrow. It is expected to pass and then move on to the president's desk to be signed and be implemented ahead of that March 14th deadline when those benefits do run out that were previously allocated for. Now let's take a look at the latest numbers for COVID-19 in the globe. These come from Johns Hopkins University across the world. The total number of COVID cases is now at 117,360,637. 
and the total number of deaths is now at 2,604,802. Here in the U.S., we do lead the world in the percentage of cases and the percentage of deaths. We've got 4% of the global population, but 24.8% of the global cases and 20.1% now of the global deaths. That's down a tenth of a percentage point from yesterday. Here in the U.S., there have been 29,052,064 reported COVID-19 cases and 524,550 reported COVID-19 deaths. Again, those numbers all come from Johns Hopkins University. Now here in Ohio, we've got the latest numbers from the Ohio Department of Health, and we are seeing an increase in new reported cases over the last 24 hours. That number at 1,893 up since yesterday. Taking a look at the testing that's being done, on Sunday, about 4.1% of 14,000 COVID tests came back positive, so that's about 564 positives on Sunday, and the seven-day average remains at 3% right now, both of those numbers below the World Health Organization's recommended threshold of 5%. Now, as you know, reports on deaths are now coming twice a week because Ohio has changed the way they do that reporting, instead focusing only on certified COVID-19 deaths as they are reported on death certificates. But we do know in the past year, more than 17,500 Ohioans have lost their lives. And to honor those people today, Governor DeWine has ordered flags on federal and state property to be flown at half staff. In the last day, there have been 132 new hospitalizations related to COVID. That number is up. All of these numbers are up, by the way. There are now 929 people hospitalized in Ohio related to COVID-19, and 249 of those people are being treated in an intensive care unit. We've seen 17 new ICU admissions in the last 24 hours. Taking a look at the vaccination process here in the state of Ohio, almost 10% of Ohioans are completely vaccinated. That's about 1,165,000 people. In the last day, almost 30,500 new people have become fully vaccinated. And in terms of the people who have started the vaccination process, if you're getting one of those two-shot COVID-19 vaccines, now over 2 million people in the state have started that process. That's over 17% of our population, and about 38,000 more people in the last day have at least gotten the first shot if they're getting a two-shot dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Today, at Bowling Green State University, students held a moment of silence to honor Stone Foltz and a protest march to demand change. Now, if you're not familiar with this story, Stone Foltz died on Sunday. This is days after he was hospitalized following an alleged hazing incident at a fraternity event that happened off campus. So events uh, began today at 11 a.m. at the now delisted Pi Kappa Alpha fraternity house. There was a period of silence to honor Fultz, 20 years old, who died on Sunday. And the suspected hazing incident is being investigated at Bowling Green State University. The incident allegedly occurred at a Pike off-campus event, that's Pi Kappa Alpha, on Thursday, and the fraternity has been placed on interim suspension as law enforcement officials do look into the situation right now. On Monday, a Bowling Green Police Division spokesperson told WTOL, our sister station in Toledo, that no arrests or charges have been filed in relation to Fultz's death right now. Now, here in the Cleveland area, there has been a proposal to expand Amtrak routes, and Cleveland City Council did pass a resolution in support of this measure. Now, if this increase goes through, it would increase the number of weekly trains that arrive and depart from Cleveland from 28 to 154. That is quite the jump in Amtrak traffic in Cleveland if this does move forward. So it was on their Monday meeting that the Cleveland City Council passed this resolution supporting Amtrak's proposed expansion. And it's also urging members of Congress to support a renewal of the federal surface transport reauthorization and sign off on the funds because this would be paid for by federal funds that do need to be approved by Congress and President Joe Biden. That is key to this process. Project. Now, the new routes, if they are able to move forward, would include a route from Cleveland through Columbus and Dayton to Cincinnati, from Cleveland to Pontiac, Michigan, through Toledo and Detroit. Also, two routes to New York from Cleveland, one through Pittsburgh and one through Buffalo and Albany, and then one route from Cincinnati through Indianapolis to Chicago. Major news for people traveling in this area and as someone who enjoys visiting New York after living there for a couple years, 
think this would be a really great opportunity for the city of Cleveland. And by the way, just riding the train is actually charming. You know, President Biden is a big fan of Amtrak, and uh, it is very charming. I've had the opportunity to do it a few times, so if you haven't done it, this does go through. I would recommend giving it a shot for a little getaway. And one more story to let you know about before we go. Cleveland's Magic 105.7 has launched the Mark Nolan Show, and this is effective immediately. So this will be weekdays from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m., so congratulations to Mark Nolan and his team. Also featured on the show will be Jen Pachano and 96.5 KISS FM personality Crystal Elise. So what you can expect from this show is a Cleveland-centric show with music from the 70s and the 80s and some talk about current events. Now, Mark Nolan used to work here at 3 News. He's been at Magic 105.7 for the last nine years. Here's what he said earlier. He said he's thrilled to launch this new show on a station that means so much to Cleveland. Getting to do a morning show in your hometown is an incredible honor. I look forward to informing and entertaining the city I love for years to come. And I caught up with Mark, and he told me that both he, along with Jen and Crystal, are very excited, but they're also a little bit nervous because Magic 105.7 has a lot of history, but they are excited to get people ready for every single day. So on your morning drive or what have you, you can check out the Mark Nolan Show now, Monday through Friday from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Magic 105.7. And congratulations again to Mark and also Jen and Crystal on that. All right, that's it for your three news now update for Tuesday, March 9th. I will see you next up on What's New at 5 p.m. with your trending stories in the Clicking in Cleveland segment, which, by the way, you can watch that live for free in the WKYC app. Just open up the app when we're broadcasting any of our news shows. That includes What's New, What Matters Most, What's Next, and also the Go Morning Show if you are an early morning riser. You can watch that live right on your app. That's it for now, everyone. Stay safe, be well, enjoy this warm weather that we're having today here in Northeast Ohio. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for more 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney.